Wow, choking on a fly. What a horrible way to go. Yeah, I'd rather just get stabbed to death myself. You guys, I'm going to be lonely again. Can't, can't anybody do something about the old man? Yes, actually, I can. Dungeon Master, I cast a healing word on the old man. With a single word of the divine tongue, you request the healing power of your god. The answer to your plea comes swift as glittering moats surround the wounds and provide some small relief from the pain they cause. Unfortunately, the old man is dead dead, so healing word doesn't work. Wait, the wizard can cast healing word? Well, in that case, I'm going to cast raise dead on the old man. Holding the priceless diamond over the chest of the fallen, you intone words of power designed to coax the dead person's soul back into its ravaged body. All at once, the diamond crumbles into dust. Motes of golden light flow from your fingertips into the lifeless corpse, and miraculously, the body's eyes flutter and then gingerly open. Oh! It's, it's wonderful to be back. Now, let's go kill some rat-faced kobolds. Rat-faced? What are you talking about? Yeah, didn't you hear? The game designers are constantly rewriting history. Kobolds have had a draconic lineage for quite some time now. Yep, that's right. And they also recently destroyed the Firbolg, once a giant kin, and turned them into a, a species of wussy druids. Dear, it is sad times indeed when a company begins capitulating to the demands of the vocal minority on social media. Hey, isn't anyone else wondering how the lowly intern suddenly began giving such beautiful descriptive text? Yeah. Did you guys hear those spell descriptions? They were lovely! Indeed, I do believe our illustrious Dungeon Master has been using Describe.com. Oh yeah, Describe.com is wonderful, and you can get 10% off when you use the coupon code the hmm. DM layer. Well, when I was young, we didn't have fancy programs that made us better Dungeon Masters. Holy <laughs> crap, I walked right into a sleazy plug! Welcome to the DM Lair. I'm Lucar, and I've been a Dungeon Master since the very first boring, lame, uninteresting D&D monster was ever imagined, the giant. I mean, seriously, giants are so dull and uninspiring in combat, basically just big old sacks of hit points that do damage. la di da Anyway, on this channel, I give practical Dungeon Master advice that you can use in your Dungeons & Dragons games. And today in the Lair, we're gonna be talking about how to spice up your monsters, make them way more exciting in combat, and help them hold their own against characters that get more and more powerful with every splat book that comes out, such as Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Namely, we're gonna be going over the top 10 feats to give your monsters. But first, do you sometimes find it challenging to give narrative descriptions to your players? Descriptions of places, monsters, spells, and other important elements of an epic fantasy adventure? Well, with Describe, you can enter the name of a monster, place, or spell and get a professionally written narrative description you can read to your players. For instance, let's say that you have a wizard player who's always slinging awesome spells about and you want to describe those arcane invocations like a boss. Just head to describe.com and type in the name of the spell. We'll do Feeble Mind here. Then click the Feeble Mind card and a beautiful description crafted by Describe's experienced RPG writers comes up. Then you can read it aloud to your players, setting the scene perfectly and painting that amazing description of the wizard leaving his foe whimpering like a spoiled child. And they have a new cartographer's collection, which includes narrative descriptions and maps for your game. There are currently over 2,000 scenes of monsters, places, spells, characters, and items to help you describe that perfect scene to your players. Now, many of the scenes are completely free, but hundreds more are available with a paid subscription. So if you want to enhance the theater of mind experience for your players in your next game session, check out Describe at dscryb.com forward slash the DM layer. And if you use the coupon code, the DM layer, you will get 10% off your first subscription payment. So if you go for that annual payment option, you'll save even more. All right, and now on to giving your monsters feats. Why give monsters feats? 
<laughs> Number one, to make them more interesting. Giants are lame and boring as previously established, but give a line of frost giants, hellbirds, the sentinel feet and the polar mastery feet and you have a fun little encounter on your hands. And you can do this with most monsters. Just sprinkle a cool feat or two in and suddenly a monster becomes way more dynamic and exciting at the game table. This also helps give nice little surprises to players who might have the monster manual memorized or who are cheating and looking things up as you play. Because we you know players would never do that. I don't think mine do. Oh dear, my players now are like, Luke, you have no idea. Poor Luke, he's clueless. <laughs> Number two, to make them more powerful. It is a known fact that with every splat book that is released, characters in the game become more powerful. Simple matter of fact, cannot be argued with. Not only does every possible combo potentially contribute to the power creep, but the new classes and subclasses being released are straight up more powerful than the core rules in the player's handbook. Now. As Dungeon Masters, we can complain and cry all we want about this, though I guarantee you that no one over there is listening. Or we can take matters into our own hands, and giving monsters feats is a quick and simple way to do just that. Since characters keep getting more powerful, but the horrible, already broken CR system we have is not being updated, here's my suggestion. When you give your monsters feats, don't even worry about changing their challenge rating. Just give them a feat or two and call it a day. Now, at low levels, when PCs are pretty squishy, I think giving a monster one feat shouldn't change the CR a whole lot. But if you give the monster two feats, you might want to bump it up by one or so. However, at mid-levels of the game, certainly by the time the group is level eight or so, I would just give monsters one or two feats and not adjust their challenge rating one bit. Remember, we're trying to keep up with the power creep that characters have. If you adjust monster challenge rating, when you give them feats, you're effectively not doing that at all. Top 10 feats for monsters. Number one. Warcaster. With Warcaster, enemies have advantage on concentration checks to maintain concentration, can cast spells when the PCs provoke attacks of opportunity, and don't need to have a free hand to use somatic components. Are you tired of every spellcaster you deploy getting its butt handed to it because of how easy it is for the PCs to break its concentration when they focus fire? Well, start giving your spellcasters Warcaster. Most wise players take it for good reason, why shouldn't the bad guys? Number two, sharpshooter. Oh, let's see. Enemy archers now ignore half cover and three quarters cover, can attack at long range without disadvantage, and get a plus 10 to damage on every attack? Yes, please. No, okay, sure, this makes archers and other ranged attackers more powerful, but it does something very good for your combat. It forces the players to consider the archers as massive threats, more so than the melee monsters tying them down. And they get to use tactics and their brains to get at the archers before they get torn apart. It makes the players think and it makes the battle more dynamic and exciting. Number three. Lucky. You knew I was gonna go there, right? Tired of sucky dice rolls just when you need them the most? <laughs> That's what the lucky feat is for, baby. Now, is being able to re-roll d20s a little sleazy? Does it feel like cheating just a little bit? Well, maybe, but no more so than when the players are doing it. Fair's fair, right? Number four, Mounted Combatant. This gives you advantage on melee attacks against unmounted creatures, forces attacks against your mount to target the monster instead, and the mount has evasion. Having a mounted monster with this feat not only makes it more powerful, but also makes the battle more interesting. I mean, how often do you see creatures riding mounts and using them to good effect? Number five, Great Weapon Master. This feat is the melee equivalent of Sharpshooter, but not quite as good. The bonus attack for dropping PCs to zero hit points probably won't proc very much, but the plus 10 to damage on every attack sure is nice and will probably help drop PCs to zero a little bit faster. I might add. I suggest giving this feat to enemies with multiple attacks and high attack roll modifiers, and you might even consider giving it to monsters that use one-handed weapons. We're the Dungeon Masters, we can do that. 
Number six, Grappler. This feat gives the monster advantage on attack rolls against the creature they are grappling and allows them to try to pin the creature, which makes both of them restrained. Now the, the pinning is rather situational, but who wouldn't take advantage on all their attack rolls, especially when the monster runs up and grabs a hold of the weakling wizard. This gives the monster a small power boost, granted, but it also makes the combat more interesting because the monster is using a specific tactic that characters need to avoid or counter. Number seven, Polearm Master. This beautiful feat allows the monster to make an extra attack that does hardly any damage, but more importantly, lets the monster make an opportunity attack when they enter the monster's reach. And since they have a pole arm, that's at 10 feet away. So basically the monster gets an extra attack, which is really cool. However, this feat really shines when it's used in conjunction with the next feat. Number eight, Sentinel. This beaut of a feat makes it so that when the monster hits a PC with an opportunity attack, the PC's speed becomes zero and PCs provoke even if they take the disengage action. And when a PC makes an attack against another monster within five feet, you can use your reaction to make an attack. Simply put, this feat is absolutely amazing. By itself, it prevents PCs from fleeing and moving around the field of combat and it lets monsters get extra attacks against PCs. However, when combined with Polar Master, it turns a mob of monsters into the perfect Phalanix that stops PCs in their tracks, doing damage to them, but not allowing them to close to do damage to the monsters. Once upon a time, my Hand of Light group was in the Nine Hells, and they came up upon this Phalanix of infernal gnolls armed with glaives. And yes, they had both of these feats, Polar Master and Sentinel. My players would try to move up to them to attack. The gnolls would be like, boop, 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 attack them, stop them in their tracks. My players couldn't get closer. And then the gnolls on their turn would attack and then move backward. And the players on their turn would move forward, provoke from the gnolls, get smoked, and then not be able to move any closer and attack. Then back on the gnolls turn, they would attack the players and then move backwards. <laughs> it's just, this beautiful cycle repeated itself. The players unable to get close to attack them, the gnolls constantly smoking them, and then their line retreating. It was beautiful, it was wonderful. I think the players were around level 15 or 16 at the time, and I had lots of fun. Number nine, Shield Master. This feat allows a monster to use a bonus action to either knock a PC prone or push them away improve their dexterity saving throws, and essentially get evasion. So, the monster gets some survivability, which is great considering how much players love to cast fireball, and they can knock PCs prone. And that's huge, by the way, because it grants all the other monsters advantage on their attacks against that PC. And in fifth edition, advantage is an extremely powerful game mechanic. And again, we're giving the monsters gimmicks, which makes the fight more dynamic and exciting than just swinging with weapons and doing damage. And that's something fifth edition is often lacking. Number 10, Mage Slayer. Do you have player spellcasters that just tear your monsters a new one every combat? Well, throw a pack of baddies at them with Mage Slayer and see how things change. This feat gives monsters an extra attack when spellcasters cast spells next to them, imposes disadvantage on spellcasters' constitution saving throws to maintain constitution concentration on spells. I, I love that part, by the way. And it gives the monsters advantage on saving throws from casters nearby. Basically, this is the go-to feat to make your players' spellcasters crap themselves. And, and I, I feel it would be wise for any self-respecting big bad evil guy to have at least a couple minions trained in this feat for when the need arises to take out a problematic spellcaster raiding their stronghold. Don't forget, if you'd like finely crafted descriptive text for your games, monsters, places, items, and even spells, head over to describe.com forward slash the DM layer and use coupon code the DM layer to get 10% off your first payment. And if you're looking for a monthly D&D magazine with fifth edition adventures and other game master resources to reduce your prep time and make your games even better, click the link below to my Patreon page. Every month, my patrons get another issue of Layer Magazine, and the June issue just came out. If you think the feats we discussed today will have your players begging for mercy, give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment for the algorithm down below. Let YouTube know that I don't completely suck. And until next time, let's play D&D.